Before I start, there is a few things I want to say. I hope you're doing well. The world around us is undoubtedly chaotic, violent, and divisive. It's heartbreaking. As an artist, I appreciate the beauty of this world and the people in it, and my mission is to help people to see it. We are not living in a perfect world, but there is much to love in this world and its people. And sadly, it feels like everyday bad things just keep happening to push against this notion. I am a small creator, and there's not much I can do. But if you choose to watch this video, I hope my content gives you just a little bit of peace and joy. So I just want to say thank you. Please take care, stay safe, and if you are able, go create something positive in this world. Painting, photography, writing, music, or even just some kind words. These are desperately needed in our world today. Thank you. Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. It's been a few months since I shared a painting video. Not that I haven't been painting, but I want to allow myself some time to really work on individual pieces instead of rushing through for the sake of making a video here. If you have been following my channel, you probably seen I've interviewed several of my favorite artists. Or if you're new to my channel, be sure to check out that video. These interview inspired me greatly. Despite being all different artists, one thing they shared is their commitment to producing better paintings. This forced me to reflect on my own mindset. I started to ask myself, am I more of an artist who does YouTube or a YouTuber who does art? Now, there's nothing wrong with either of them, and I do think it is possible to do both. But given my time is limited with a full-time job and a family with three kids, I do think I have to make a choice. And no, I'm not saying I will quit YouTube and stop making video because it is the reason that I did that interview and paint more in the first place. But I also need to be realistic about how much I can do and what I really want for myself. I have done a couple of paintings recently, and if you are somewhat familiar with my work, you can tell they are more detailed and polished. These took much longer to produce. They take about five to six hours, and I understand. There are artists out there who spend tens of hours to finish a single painting, but consider most of my painting were done in under two hours before. This is a huge change for me. I still like loose painting, and you can definitely see some loose elements in these paintings. But I want to dedicate more time to each painting. That being said, my time is just as limited as before, so I decided to focus on quality over quantity. I would rather spend more time making a painting that I'm happy than paint multiple loose painting and see if I like any of them. Honestly, this is very difficult to do, especially in the world today, when just by prompting a few phrases, AI can spit out a good-looking image in seconds. It also doesn't help when you scroll through social media and see other artists coming out with paintings more frequently than you. But I have to say, spending more time to finish a painting that I'm happy with is just so much more satisfying than doing one-hour loose painting like routine. Because ultimately, I started to paint watercolor because I like traditional painting. So if I want quick result, I would have just stick with a computer. And this does affect how I'm going to run this channel. As I mentioned, I'm still going to make videos because I do like create content here and interact with you. But I have to be honest. After I got my silver play button, I felt less motivated to keep pumping out videos. I can study analytic in my channel and work with the algorithm to get more views, but I don't think that will make me happy. I want to help people with their watercolor, but it's more important for me that I can help you to feel happy when you paint. Even if you're not painting, I want my content to offer some peace and joy in your life. And I feel if I start to just focus on making video for views and channel growth, I am going to lose focus on what I really want to do. I will still do video on helpful watercolor tips and techniques because they are essential. But like the change in my own paintings, I want to focus on creating quality content over a consistent update, like being stuck in a YouTube hamster wheel. 
And trust me, I know consistency is one of the key to grow my channel. I've learned all about it. But at least for now, I want to go at a pace that I'm more comfortable with and put out well thought out and enjoyable content. So that's pretty much what happened to me recently. There is no huge event that happened to me personally. This is more of a mindset shift. But I do want to share that with you because you are an essential part of this channel and what I do. Despite my channel not being that big, I am very, very grateful for you spending your time watching this video, being part of this journey with me. I will continue to paint, so if you're interested in my work, please follow me on Instagram and feel free to interact with me there. So all that being said, I want to share with you the process of this painting. Since it took a lot longer to paint, there is no way I can show you the real-time version of the video because we'll be here all day. So I will just go through the process with you, slow down on some parts, and explain what I did. So grab a drink, relax, and let's go through this painting process together. Okay, let's take a look at the process of this painting. So start off with the line drawing as always. That being said, the line drawing took me about an hour to do. So even though this part of the video has sped up, I actually spent quite a bit of time doing the drawing. This is a challenge to me because I'm not used to spending more than about 30 minutes on a drawing. And you can actually see probably for the first time in my channel that I use ruler. And I know that ruler is a tool that many artists frown on using and I have avoided using ruler myself. Artists who I learned from, Joseph Spokvich or Andy Evenson, they all suggest against using ruler. Reason being that if the line is so straight and perfect, it doesn't really look interesting. And I understand where they're coming from and I do agree with that. But for a subject like this, a cityscape with a lot of buildings, I want to be able to draw a little bit more accurately. So while I have confidence to draw a straight line, I don't have confidence to draw many perpendicular lines and lines that are following the perspective and so on. And that is one of the mindset shift that I had. I want to focus more on the painting that I want to paint and the end result that I want to have instead of really trying to be stubborn about the way I achieve that. So instead of trying to grab a hold onto a specific way of painting, I want to explore different possibility and use different tools. Of course, there is still a limit for me, so I won't be suggesting using things like projector or just trace over the photo because the more you do something like that the less human is going to feel if you know what i mean so i'm only using ruler for some long lines and making sure that they are perpendicular they're parallel and things like that little detail like the windows right here i'm still drawing it by hand because i still want that human touch i still want that hand-drawn feel to it so instead of talking about the drawing process, which is very tedious and boring, let me talk a little bit about what I was looking for in this painting. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, my conversation with some of the master really inspired me to re-examine myself, to think about what I really like. So I started to think about the things that I like since I was a teenager and until now I still pretty much in love with and that is Japanese anime. I love watching anime and anime movies when I was a teenager and college year and even until now. The other day my youngest kid is watching Totoro, a very early Ghibli anime movie. And earlier this year I took my oldest son to watch Suzume which is another anime movie that is very very beautiful. When I watch those movies and see the background environment art, I was always blown away and stunned by how beautiful they are. So as I was reflecting on myself about the direction of my work and the style that I want to go to, I thought to myself why not try to recreate a similar feeling in my watercolor painting. The sense of calm and stillness in those beautiful anime style background painting. Ever since I started learning watercolor, I've been learning from a master who I like, like Joseph Spookvich, like Andy Evenson, they have done some beautiful loose painting. So I've been learning how to paint like a western loose watercolor artist. 
but now I want to try to do something that I actually like, that is actually from my heart. So when I'm doing this painting, I am putting a lot more attention to detail and try to make this painting as polished as possible. It's not going to look exactly the same as those anime painting because they're mostly done with squash and they still got way more detail than I do. The styles still need to match my personality. But this painting, I definitely slow down quite a bit and give it a lot more attention. So after this long drawing, I use some masking fluid on the signal light and the car headlight. And I actually took a break after the drawing because it was very tiring. But onto the first wash. So before I start painting, I actually mix out the color that I want for the sky. The first wash, as always, is the color of the light. Doesn't matter if I want to change the style of my painting, the process is the same. It is early evening, so the sky is still blue, but as it approaches the horizon, it turns much warmer. And in between the blue and the yellow, I use a bit of alizarin crimson to avoid the color turn green because the green color on the sky probably doesn't look that good. So the color from the sky will shift from blue to a little bit of the purplish blue into orange and to yellow. So after I mix the color on my palette and making sure that they look good together, and then I take a deep breath and start my first wash. Very scary because I spent a lot of the time doing the drawing. So the last thing I want is to mess up the painting and waste it all the time that I spent on the drawing. So take a deep breath and go for it. And this is the first wash. The first wash is the color of the light. So don't try to define anything just yet. Focus on the color of the light. So you can see that I am trying my best to do a nice smooth gradation for the background sky. And when the wash reached the road, I start to add a little bit of burnt umber to neutralize the blue and make it a little bit more like a cool gray. One thing you might notice is that the color turns out very washed out on my painting because I am using a lot of water for the first wash. Now the buildings on the left has some caustic light on it. What happened is the sun hitting the glass surface of the building and it bounced back onto the wall of the building on the left. That's what I'm seeing. So I'm adding a little bit more warm color to get the color of the light. Before the wash is dry, I do some wet onto wet work with a bit thicker paint to get the texture on the road as well as a little bit of the reflection of the headlight of the car. It is not a rainy day, so the reflection is very, very weak, but it's still faintly there, and I want to bring attention to that. Before it is dry, you can always add just a little bit more color variation and such. Now, like I mentioned earlier, the first wash is just the color of the light. So don't get ahead of yourself too much by trying to define the things in your painting. Just focusing on painting a clean wash and putting colors. Now that the wash is completely dry, I come back and start to paint the background. I pre-wet the surface a little bit so we get some soft edges. The background buildings are really far away, so keeping them simple. And I keep the color mostly on the cooler side with a little hints of pink. And starting from the background, I expand that shape outward to the side. And while I was painting this single shape, I tried to vary the color a little bit. It is sunset, it's very rich in color. So I want to pay attention to the color that I use. And as I expand the shape outward, I'm painting the building that's closer and closer. So I start to add just a little bit more paint as I do so. I took this photo a few months ago when I was in Vancouver. I drove by the downtown Vancouver. And when I was on the red light waiting for a green light, I saw this beautiful scene. I actually been through this place many times, but the lighting and the whole look of the scenery really caught my eyes. I really love how all the buildings are reflecting the light of the sky and the sunset. So I took a photo and decided to paint this scene. The building on the left is actually the famous Fairmount Hotel Vancouver. 
So now I am starting to paint the tree in the background. That being said, very important that I still try to connect the shape as much as possible. Connecting shape is still very important to keep your painting look harmonious and help the viewers to have a good visual flow. So just because I'm trying to create a different feel of the paint, so just because I'm trying to paint a little bit differently doesn't mean I forget everything that I've learned. Before the wash is dry, I add a little bit more dark for the background tree. It is actually quite dark, so I want to add that while it is still wet so it doesn't look disconnected. And now I'm painting the background building, giving it more detail, which is something that I rarely do before. Before, when I was painting more loosely, I will probably just paint it as a single shape, maybe with a little bit of wet on too wet. But this time, I want to give it a lot more attention. And also those very subtle change of color because of the light, I also want to paint them in. Those are the elements that moved me when I look at the scenery. So it deserves more of my attention instead of just paint it off with few big brush strokes. Nothing wrong with those, I just want to paint a little bit different in this time. And appreciate subtle detail like these actually fits my personality a little bit more, I have to say. So I'm painting the building on the right, it is a bigger shape, so I switch to a bigger brush. Do need to be careful to paint around the road sign, but you also don't want to slow down too much to risk the wash to dry. Once you start a wash, you want to finish that shape and the shape is connected to before you take a pause. So when I was painting the building, I need to make sure I finish this shape before I take a break. Otherwise, you might end up having a lot of little different shapes or worse, you might end up with some cauliflower edges. And that is not something I want in this painting. So I continue to wash, paint around the figure to preserve the highlight, and wrap up this shape. And as I expand the shape out, I start to paint, I start to paint the reflection on the glass building on the right. The reflections are hard edges because the buildings are very shiny and reflective. So I want to interpret that in my painting. I'm using ruler trying to reference the direction of the perspective. So I draw some pencil line first and I sort of trace over those lines with a smaller brush. They're not perfect because I paint those lines by hand, but they won't be too far off. So as I paint, I continue adding a little bit more detail, some value variations. And sometimes I have to wait for a wash to dry in order to paint the shape next to it. If I still want a little bit of separation. Adding some red to the flags. Those need to be done in early stage. Otherwise, if I paint the darker value, it will be hard for me to add those red on top unless I use gouache. So I start to paint the background skyscraper. It is a glass skyscraper, so it reflects a lot of the color of the sky. So it's also from cool to warm, but the value is much darker. I want to add some detail on the building, but I need to wait for it to dry because I want those shapes to be hard shape. For now, I continue the shape down, connect the shapes as needed, leave out the highlights, and add more warms in the bottom. Now the warm color fades off quite a bit, so don't be afraid to use just a little bit more to compensate that. Now the top of the building is dried enough, I am starting to work on the detail a little bit more. That being said, I am not going to paint each and every single window panel. That's just not realistic. So all I'm doing is to suggest some different colors and different reflections on windows and try to have those details following the structure of the building. And with enough suggestions, they will look like different window panels. And try my best not to overdo it. Sometime when it looks good, it's time to stop, not try to do more. 
And by adding a little bit of this detail, the buildings start to look much more dimensional. And one thing you need to pay attention to is to avoid paint with the same brush strokes over and over again. Every brush stroke count, so don't keep repeating the same brush strokes, otherwise your painting may look dead very, very quickly. And that is especially important when you are painting a little bit more detail because it's made with a lot more brush strokes. So now I am starting to work on the buildings on the left. So here I'm adding more warm color on the left, trying to bring out the color of those caustic light. They are bright, but they are actually not that bright, but they are more saturated than what I already had because the first wash fade up quite a bit, so those color almost disappear. I want to be able to have more color. So I just add more colors and wet on to wet connect with other shapes. So from the building to the car, try to connect the shapes. So continue this wash by painting. So continue this layer by finishing the buildings on the left, as well as the glass skyscraper on the left, which is the same as the one on the right. There is a very dark reflection on the glass windows. And again, try to finish that wash in one go. And there's some details in that reflection for sure, but I want to do that wet on to wet just to differentiate the surface quality between the glass surface and the real scene. This is a tough stage of a painting because you already spend hours on a painting already, but you don't really see the painting happening just yet because the lack of contrast and because I work from light to dark, I wasn't able to put in strong contrast just yet, so things still look quite flat. So it's actually very mentally stressful at this stage because I don't know how it's going to turn out, especially that I'm trying a new way of painting and I already spent hours on it. So that's why you need to have faith in watercolor. You need to continue to paint, trying to endure this stage and believe that this will come out a good painting that you're happy with. Of course, sometimes that doesn't happen, but if you don't see it through, you will never know. So keep calm, trust the process, and just continue, and you might end up with a painting that you like. So now I'm actually starting to add more dark value into my painting. And as I do that, things are starting to look much, much better because the contrast start to appear. And when the contrast appear, the structure of the building appears and everything's starting to fall in place. Things starting to look more dimensional and you are able to see the finished painting more and more clearly. So the sky around the horizon is lacking a bit of color. So I go back and add more warm colors to it which is something I start to care quite a bit in my work is the color. Now, I am not going to start going full saturation and make it super colorful, but I want to bring attention to the color that I see. I want to recreate those beautiful light and colors because those are the motivation that I want to paint in the first place. So if I don't make the effort to bring them out, I am doing a disservice for such a beautiful subject. So I add the warm color and I fade off that edge with clean water and the damp brush so that it fades off naturally into the sky. So this is the scene that I want to start focusing on a little bit more in my work. It is not something that I do much before. But now I'm doing that because that's what I want to see in my painting. So this is actually a very important painting for me because as I paint, I kept asking myself, what do I want to see from this painting? Instead of trying to see what will other artists do, what will Joseph do, what will Andy do, what will other artists do, I start to think, what do I want to see? And that is not an easy question because you need to develop your own vision 
for your painting. So anyways, I start to give more definition on the cars on the street by adding some darker values. Now these still trying to keep them loose, but I again want to pay a little bit more attention to the light on the headlight, try to get that little glow. Just try to add more mood and atmosphere to my painting. And before, I would just either paint around it or come back to it and add some white gouache. And those are the quote unquote proven way to work. And I've been using those methods to paint, but I want to try something a little bit different this time. Not like drastically different that is so out there that is just never seen before, but just trying to step out of the comfort zone a little bit. And this starting to paint the car in the front. And this is the fun stage of the painting because everything is coming together. And it is very rewarding to see because you spend so much time doing the drawing, doing the washes, trying to set the stage. And now when you put those main actors on the stage, this beautiful stage that you have created, it's like you seeing drama coming to life. It's very rewarding and even a little bit touching to see. Just to think about this is a completely white paper a few hours ago. It's very touching to see. You created something from nothing. And that is always worth celebrating. So I'm adding some dark window to the hotel. As soon as I add those, the caustic light just starting to shine. It's starting to pop. And I'm painting the dark tree on the street. And again, try to connect those shapes. Even though there are some details within them, but trying to treat them as a single shape. Because the function of these dark trees, these dark shapes, is to separate the cars from the buildings. Because as soon as I put the dark around the truck, around the car, they start to pop in front immediately. So even though I'm using a smaller brush to paint the trees, the details, I focus mainly on articulating the silhouette. I still try to make it a single shape. Because even though I'm painting more detail, doesn't mean I forget the big picture. So when I was painting, I constantly look at the computer screen where I record the video because the painting on the computer screen is much smaller than a real scene. So it's almost equivalent to me stepping back a few steps to look at the whole picture. And that's a very useful way to check if the image holds up when you look at it in the distance. Or does it fall apart because the details and the value jumping all over the place? We are actually very narrow sighted. Our field of view is very narrow. And especially when we focus on a specific spot, we tend to forget the whole picture. So very important that you check the whole picture once in a while, not to stuck in the detail. And you can add more detail, you can paint more detail, but don't forget the big picture. I cannot repeat that enough. So now I'm removing the masking fluid. Very, very fun step because you can see the light just pops. The signals and the car headlights, they all pops. I like to use little masking fluid for those areas because those areas are very small. To paint around them is not going to be very effective. But if I just come back with white gouache, it never give me that bright and clean feeling as white paper. So now you can see those headlights starting to pop in the picture and they look very, very good. So switch to a smaller brush, adding a few little details on the street sign and so on. Not going to do all the writings, but just enough to suggest the details. Adding a few more darks, the street light, the signals, and a few details in the distance. So things are coming together. I'm just adding more details. And finishing up the car in the front. Adding the dark to complete the contrast. And the car now pops in front because of the high contrast. 
and after I put those darks on the cars, the road is now looking too light. So I do a glaze over it and it look much better and the sky looks brighter as well. A few more details and I start to paint some birds in the sky. So I actually took a second photo and there's actually birds flying across the sky. So I want to recreate that in my painting. But I add a few more birds just so that this bird doesn't feel too lonely. And we are finished. This is a very important painting for me. Not because it looks extraordinarily beautiful or anything, but it is a huge step for me. Try not to mimic the artists who I learned from. I appreciate them so much, they have taught me a lot, but it's time to use what I learned to paint something that I want to see. And I hope that's shown through the process and the final painting. Thank you so much for watching it till the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. I actually miss sharing with you my life and my thoughts. And as always, if you like to support what I do, consider give it a like, subscribe, and even share it if you think it can help someone else. I am Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Wish you a wonderful day wherever you are. I will see you next time.